Thank you. So now uh, let me request uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar. So his focus is more on engineering and technology. And his uh, university has taken a lot of interesting steps to make the students undertake more interesting projects, start new enterprises, and so on. So let me request him to share those examples with us. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks to Mr. Satya, I'll be spot on. In uh, giving a brief account of some direct and uh, indirect experiences in fostering research and uh, innovative activities in the university, and also identify the collaboration opportunities where peers can work together and aim for some inclusive improvement. Uh, most of these observations are definitely applicable to an engineering institution or a technical institution, but I would like to affirm that these observations are equally relevant to any other institution which has got a quest for seeking leadership positions through constant effort and perseverance. See, uh, thanks to the autonomy which has been provided by UGC and uh, measures taken by NBA and AACT, many affiliated colleges are also now truly autonomous in terms of doing the curriculum design. And we have got mechanisms like this academic councils, the boards, BOMs, etc., which play catalytic role in making sure that the curriculum is designed. What we have done in the university about three, four years ago, while we were through this exercise, looked at the very famous report brought out by McKinsey on the disruptive technologies, the very inspiring report, Technology 2035, and uh, several uh, reports connected with the global engineering challenges. And we realized that in case we want to incorporate these aspects into our curriculum, there are many challenges, the foremost being the faculty did not go through formal introduction to these courses when they were doing their BTEC or MTech programs. This is the fundamental challenge. So we need to have a top-down effort. The top-down effort was we went on to set up certain labs. In this case, a lab connected with autonomous vehicles or drones, design tinkering, renewable energy, so on and so forth. See, no top-down effort will be successful in case the stakeholders are not committed. The fundamental speak, uh, stakeholder in this case is the faculty, which is supposed to deliver the courses. So what is that we did? We went through one-to-one -one, uh, interactions with the complete cross-section of our faculty, primarily with focus on the younger faculty, and tried to find out, in case they pick up a research pursuit in a particular domain, how does the outcome connect with that of an institution aspiration how does it connect with a student's uh, endeavor? And how does it connect with his own individual aspirations? So we created a dossier of these reports by talking to almost all the faculty members. Then let me describe what we did with reference to drones. We made it more or less compulsory that each and every student who gets into the first year of engineering, right in the first semester, goes through one day hands-on experience in building a bird mimicking uh, drone called Ornithopter. Then we created a plethora of opportunities for the faculty to go to the R&D labs and also seek small internship positions in the labs abroad. And we also enabled by partially supporting the student mobility to go to countries like Korea, Singapore, uh, Canada, Israel, etc., etc., in terms of they pursuing small projects connected with drone development and design. And we collected our gumption and created the first ever PG course, MTech course in aeronautics, with a primary focus on design and development of uh, drones. So what is it I have got to showcase in terms of the attributes through which I can evaluate my success? See, as far as the students are concerned, you know, we are one of the 780 universities. Close to 100 of our students got paid internships to do the projects abroad. This is a very remarkable thing which happened in the last three years. And at the faculty level, they got to uh, seek some patents, postdoctoral fellowships, definitely the patents and publications which then really inspire them. And more than anything else, what happened at the institutional level is, as morning, uh, Dr. Mashelkar mentioned, monetization of knowledge. We, as a university, were able to bid and win a lot of projects connected with uh, deployment of drones for solving the social problems. 
for example, uh, measurement of EMF radiation from telecom towers, or structural health monitoring of the bridges. And recently, we won one Indo-Korea project wherein we are developing an amphibian vehicle which can float on water, fly in air, pick up the water sample, and uh, give in situ information on the water quality as per the fixed parameters uh, for the benefit of the smart city programs, both in India and Canada. So it's, a, it's about almost like 24 crore worth funding from all this effort. And I generally feel that all these innovative practices have got connectivity with all the stakeholders. And as has been mentioned on several platforms, there is a constant disconnect between uh, the purpose of engineering vis-a-vis -vis the requirements of the industry. And one of the pro methods of overcoming is by creating a connect between the conceptualization and operation. It could be called by any name. For example, famously, the Stanford calls it a CDIO framework. Conceive, design, implement, and operate. And IIT Bombay Professor Ravi's group calls it as define, develop, and deliver, and deploy with a delivery connected with the entrepreneurship development. So we created active learning spaces or design and tinkering labs. And you know the place is open without any supervisor for the students to walk in at any time. And to start with, when they are only fiddling with the experiments, fiddling with the equipment, they do some elementary things. It could be a toy car, simple mechanism. But when you challenge them with the questions, when you challenge them with the opportunity, for example, we conducted an interactive session where we talked about the Google One Million Award for a, you know, Moon Rover uh, uh, project in which even Team Indus from Bangalore is also involved. When we told them that the wheels for this Moon Rover are uh, made through 3D printing, they were definitely inspired. So what happens when they get inspired is they start developing innovative solutions. For example, one young faculty member from the electronics department who never was into bioengineering got an exposure to the below knee stump development uh, that is a low cost prosthetic device which is famously known as the Jaipur foot through an innovation camp conducted by IIT Bombay and uh, COAP Pune and just picking up the accelerometer, sensors, and uh, e-waste uh, from the mobile phones, he was able to develop sub-2,000 rupees a 3D scanning device by which you can accurately capture the inf information corresponding to the stump of a knee, which will go a long way in terms of mass customization of these processes. So this is engineering without boundaries, and when there is a quest for generating the solutions, definitely there is a landscape for innovation is always enhanced. Last year, we wanted to connect with the school teachers. Uh, there is one intrinsic desire that we want to showcase our teaching learning methods to the school teachers. But on the other side, we also wanted to help the school teachers in terms of understanding how do you integrate the technologies into the STEM education. Believe it or not, we had some mind-boggling re revelations. I will just talk about, I don't know how much more time. See, the famous. Uh, simple harmonic motion, the time period is independent of the mass and the geometry. So we asked these school teachers to make different kind of bobs like pyramids, spheres, squares, you know, connected to the same length of the thread. When you measure the time period, it is hardly affected. It is embedded into the equation, but when they do it, they truly get inspired. We made three drugs, three ducks with a different uh, densities, one floats, one submerges, one is partially sunk, so it's all Archimedes principle. So the other uh, uh, you know, connectivity which I want to uh, establish between the universities and the entrepreneurship development ecosystem is, thanks to the initiatives of DST, <coughs> Niti Ayo, Ministry of MSME, there are different forms of this uh, you know, entrepreneurship development center. Some are called as IEDCs, new gen IEDCs, uh, the technology business incubator, some are privately funded, and some are called other innovation centers. But if you look at uh, the startup companies which uh, come out of these uh, typical TBIs, they are rich sources of deployment of some fantastic uh, pieces of knowledge from very contemporary domains. For example, I want to pick up the example, uh, Airwood, an incubative of IIT Madras. He is into precision agriculture using UAVs, and he's also into big data, hyperspectral sensors, wireless networks, so on and so forth. You can understand how a CEO of this company could be a big harbinger or a forerunner in terms of creating a sensitivity to the students to the new learning methods. So I just want to conclude by saying that is a new technology must for innovation, 
Uh, new technology is nothing and everything for innovation. The nothing part of it is when you use a new technology in a conventional mode, it hardly matters. But when you can put the technology to use in a very novel way in terms of creating the value, the deployment of new technology has bound to create a measure to the innovation. And the platforms of this kind and connectivity with the industry is very, very important in terms of creating the outline and structure of innovative programs. I just want to sensitize you to the headlines of Times of India today. Last year, despite Trump, 1.04 lakh Indian students have gone to master's programs in US. And this is an increment of 12.48% compared to last year, that is 2016. You look at the cross-section of MTech programs in many universities and colleges, many of them are close, getting closed down for want of students. Is it not a paradoxical situation? In our university three years ago, in a collaboration with uh, TAFE, one of the most famous tractor manufacturers, we started an MTech program in tractor engineering with complete focus on design and development of the tractors. Third year into that particular stream, it's always full with the students. So I want this innovative spirit to be inculcated even into the structure of the programs. And the last important observation connected with the deployment of all these schemes. If you look at the cross-section of the students, 5 to 10% of the students represent Kram Dala Kram, who can get into IITs or top-notch NITs. Last 20% of the students, there is a definite mismatch between their aspirations and the university pursuits. So if you remove this 25%, 75% of the typical student fraternity is the student fraternity on whom we should be focusing, because they are on the threshold of working or non-working. So if you can create all the mechanisms by, by which you can inspire them to work harder, they are the people who can transform into innovators. And I strongly believe collaborative platforms of this kind will go a long way in terms of inclusive growth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Chandrasekhar. So there are two particular things I really liked about your presentation. One was this whole mapping of the faculty interests and aligning them with some of your institutional programs. And the second is the strength of some of the platforms you have created. I think that's a very valuable input for many of the universities here. 